Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to be going over some tips and tricks for the new skill Necromancy. I do have a list of 15 to 20 tips and tricks that I am going to go over, but if you guys have any other tips and tricks that aren't mentioned, just mention them in the comments if you want to share. So hopefully there will be some more tips and tricks down there as well. But anyway, let's jump into the video. So the first tip I have for you guys is using the PVM hub teleport to quickly get to the ritual site. So once you get to the PVM hub, you can right click the portal and go to Draenor. Then you can enter the underworld portal and you arrive at the ritual site. It's a nice and quick way to get here if you don't want to use the um ritual site teleport, which is unlocked through the rune mythos quest. When you're doing rituals at the ritual site and you have either the candles or different glyphs that need to be repaired, you can right click the pedestal and repair all, which will save you a ton of time. If you have the right necromancy level, you can talk to Selene and unlock all of the different necromancy prayers and curses. If you do have level 90 necromancy, you are able to unlock the sorrow quest, of course if you have also completed the temple at Senesen quest. The next tip is a few different tips combined all in one. It mainly revolves around using the Multiply Glyphs. Multiply Glyphs are an alteration glyph that you can apply. So for example, I am going to be doing the Subjugation Greater in Soul material. So since Subjugation is going for a ton of money, I want to get the best output possible. Since I am level 90, I have 11 Glyph spots open. There are only five glyphs that are required, which means there are six additional slots. With these six additional slots, I can boost my necromancy level up to level 103 and get the multiply three glyph. This increases the output by 60%, meaning with six extra outputs, I'm getting 360% of the output. Using my necromancy cape, I'm able to add an extra 40%, meaning that for each subjugation armor that I am using, I'm getting five greater in sold cloth. So whenever you're using some really expensive materials or you're going for the Vessel of Souls, make sure to use those multiply glyphs. They do work with the Vessel of Souls. For example, from level 60 to 70 necromancy, you can use two multiply two glyphs which will give you 36 souls per dragonkin bones, as opposed to the regular 20. The next tip for you guys is when killing mogers, you actually need to complete a mini quest. So when I was trying to upgrade my gear to get the necromantic flippers, I really didn't understand why any mogers weren't spawning. And that's because you need to complete a mini quest by talking to Skippy, southeast of Remington. So this quest does require a bucket of water, nettle tea, uh, chocolate dust, a bucket of milk, and snape grass, and it is a really quick mini quest that you can complete. Then you'll be able to buy the explosive shaker from any slayer master, and you can just keep on exploding these ominous fishing spots to spawn in the mogers to kill. The Tome of Um is definitely an item you will want to get. It is a reward for completing the City of Um tasks, and it is extremely helpful when training necromancy through rituals. So first off, it does give unlimited free teleports to the Um Smithy, which is quite helpful. It does give 10 free teleports to the ritual site, which is also really helpful. But the main benefit is really that you're getting plus 6% XP from dispelling ritual disturbances. And doing the rituals and doing these ritual disturbances, they are some of the best XP in the game for necromancy. So getting an extra 6% really does help and it will boost your XP gains in the long term. This next tip has to do with rune crafting the new impure essence. Right before you craft the runes, make sure to use a power burst of sorcery to double the amount of runes you are going to be getting. Another really helpful tip is that you can actually configure your rune pouches to prioritize the impure essence when filling them. That way when you open your bank, you can right click the uh, pouches while you are in the bank to actually just fill them up with the impure essence rather than doing it this way, which is more manual. 
The next tip is maximizing your time when filling out the Vessel of Souls. So between level 60 to 70, that's when you first want to focus on the Vessel of Souls. You will need to get 3,000 to unlock the Spirit of War quest. And then you can go to 4,500 to unlock the Spectral Scythe ability. That's personally what I went for when I was level 60 Necromancy, is I pushed to 4,500 souls. And I actually went a bit over because I didn't take advantage of this tip. So rather than trying to push to maybe the 8,500 to unlock the higher level unlocks, wait till you're level 90 Necromancy. That gives you access to the tier 3 ritual site, and you can use many more multiply glyphs. You can even have access to the powerful communion ritual, which will give you just so many more souls. At tier 90, you are able to get up to 240 souls per ritual, which will make the grind much faster. When you are doing that grind and getting the Vessel of Souls, rather than going over to the Well of Souls and managing it, you can right click it and click inspect to see how many souls you have. This just saves you time from running over and you can just check while you're in the middle of a ritual. When you are doing rituals and focusing on the ritual disturbances, you can use dive in order to get to the ritual disturbances faster. This way you will possibly get some extra XP per hour since you are getting to it faster, and you should also miss out on less ritual disturbances if you are using this method. The next tip is to use your conjures before the boss fight. If you do this, you won't use any adrenaline when conjuring them, so it can really help when conjuring the zombie, which costs 50% adrenaline if you are in combat, and the vengeful ghost, which costs 30% adrenaline. It will just help you at the early parts of different boss fights, since you'll have a lot more DPS and full adrenaline when you start the boss. If you are struggling with the tasks for the power armor upgrades, just do the tank gear tasks. You don't have to actually make the tank gear, but it at least gives you access to the higher tier weapon upgrades, which can then help you further on when you are trying to complete those power upgrades. The tank gear isn't all that bad either. It does give you more life points and you do get a chance to dodge an attack, so it will be a pretty good uh, gear for a beginner or someone trying to learn a boss. The last tip for you guys is just to use your player on Slayer Dungeon. If you are level 99 Slayer and have access to the Slayer Dungeon, then definitely use it, especially on the first week or so of release. There's going to be a lot of competition for different creatures. So if you can get your hands on some different bound skeleton souls, you can put them into your player on Slayer Dungeon, and then you have this personal spot to train whenever you want. It can be pretty good on mobile too to get some good AFK gains. And so those are all of the tips and tricks I have for you guys today. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you guys have any other tips and tricks that you want to share, definitely mention them in the comments so you can help everyone out. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.